Okay, guys, so today we got a special treat. I have a job where we're going to be repairing the charger. This right here. And I thought it'd be a great time to talk to you guys about superchargers and answer a few common questions while repairing this. So, so now that we're finished making noise, this is the supercharger here, essentially. This part here is the snout. This is the drive portion of the supercharger. Um, there's a little coupler that's going to attach to the rotor pack. Ooh, shit, this made some damage. Huh. Not good. Okay, so this one actually has some damage there. Something's gotten inside and wreaked some havoc. And you see that right there? That's binding up. So we're going to have to clear that up. But anyway, okay, for the purpose of this video, this essentially is a supercharger. And this section here with the screws fits into a casing and provides a very tight seal. And what happens is when the supercharger turns, the lobes um, interface with each other and are essentially a positive displacement pump. They take a large mass of air, like right here, and they compress it and push it together and then push it back out as pressurized air, essentially giving you boost, more horsepower, more torque, etc. Um, so this supercharger here that we have is exactly that type. Uh, I'm not sure what this is, but this screw configuration looks a little bit different than what I've been used to. We'll have to figure out what type this is. Um, but we're going to nonetheless be installing this. So I guess a couple of key things to note. Superchargers do need some type of lubrication. So this one has a sight glass here. And it also has a fill port here. So that's going to be very handy. Um, the way how they actually work is by the engine driving a belt, which drives... Um, this pulley here, which is attached by a coupler to a gear reduction unit, and um, you're able to drive the supercharger faster than the engine, meaning you're able to force more air into the engine than it actually can use, I guess, uh, in CFM. And if you have a restriction to that airflow, um, it builds up pressure, essentially, and then it's waiting to go into the engine as soon as the intake valve opens. So you end up with positive pressure and a unit like this making more than um, atmospheric pressure. Okay, next question is, who is the supercharger good for? Superchargers are primarily chosen over turbochargers because of responsiveness. Because this is being driven off of the engine and anytime the engine's turning this is turning um, you can develop quite a bit of power in an almost instantaneous matter depending on the supercharger of course uh, these type of superchargers like this one with the screw um, tend to make very good bottom and low end power and the centrifugal type that look almost like a turbocharger those tend to make power very linear in a very linear way. Um, essentially, uh, the faster you spin it, the more air it produces. They don't have a very like peaky mid-range like this, this type of supercharger that we're working on today has. Now you're probably wondering what the hell am I doing? Why am I using a file? Well, that's because if there is any issue, like right now, I can control the amount of material removed but if there's any issue with this supercharger coming in contact with the housing we're gonna have a big problem so we want to make sure that this is gonna turn yeah, like that is no good Still scraping there. 
Um, so these superchargers will have coatings on them that give the rotors something to wear into on either side rather than metal. They will be like self-lubricating coatings like this one on here is probably some type of PTFE coating uh, to reduce friction, heat, wear, etc. Get rid of all these burrs here. Let's see, there you go. You can hear a little bit, but coating might take up the rest of that. So what we'll do is we'll we'll clean all this out. So that rotor pack that we just looked at, those two rotors are gonna slide down in there, and this is the housing that they're gonna ride in. So this clearance between here and that rotor should be as tight as possible without contact and you can see from in there that it looks pretty good oh, and under there is the intercooler so this has a very fancy high density intercooler system here and there's coolant that's pumped out to a heat exchanger in the front so now we've got the rotor housing in a very nice snug fit let's see if i can pop it out real quick so you see the rotors are in there let's see like here stop messing with that and this is the drive. So your belt, which is here, is going to drive that pulley, which is going to key in here to the supercharger, I guess the primary drive. And this is going to spin with the engine, 7,000 RPM there. And then whatever that pulley overdrive works out to, it's smaller than there. So we know it's going to spin faster. And judging by the size of that pulley, I'd say probably about four times faster. So for every, let's just say, for every um, one rotation of the crank, this is going to spin four times. What will happen is the supercharger will outflow the air that the engine is capable of ingesting, and you will have positive pressure until the airflow of the engine matches up with the airflow of the supercharger. Then the pressure will start. To... Supercharger's on. See what's in there. So now we're going to get this belt on there. It's very important you don't have any oil on here. These things, they're pretty slippery and they can slip if the wrap is not good. Um, <clears throat> but that's about it. Sprintex kit is on. I'm going to wrap this thing up real quick. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, please like and subscribe and uh, post up any questions or comments you might have.